New Day Northwest is back. Now, from the AAA Travel Alcove, here's Margaret Larson. When Seattle artist Brom Wickstrom was 21 and starting a promising career as an artist, he had a swimming accident that left him paralyzed with only limited use of his arms. But stopping his art was not an option. He just needed to find a way to work with his new limitations and find a way he did. In the ensuing decades, Brahm has become an accomplished painter with beautiful and detailed works on display all over the world. He's painted for famous buyers and taught aspiring artists. Please welcome Brahm Wickstrom. It's so good to meet you. Good to meet you, Maria. Met you earlier today, and now I get a chance to see your art. Tell me a bit about this transition, this accident when you were so young and yeah. how you decided, or if you even made a decision, or just plowed forward to find a way to be an artist? Well, you know, I was a, a struggling artist. I'd, I'd managed to get a job working in a big sign company in New Orleans, um, but it really wasn't until I had my spinal cord injury and decided that I was gonna really pursue my painting, and I did a lot of frustrating, uh, struggling artist kind of paintings early on. Uh, but I think gradually I got better at it. I uh, started a volunteer program at Children's Hospital uh, that received some grant funding, and I developed that and thought maybe that's what I was going to do for a while. Yeah. Uh, but it wasn't until I started applying for uh, positions with this uh, International Association of Mouth and Foot Painting Artists, and they now have been putting my work on greeting cards and calendars and different products and providing some wonderful opportunities for me over the We're years. We're going to look at some of those in, in just a little bit. So you, did you, who taught you or did you teach yourself how to paint with your mouth, with a, a brush in your well, mouth? Well, my father was a commercial artist here in town, an art director, a very well respected one. Um, and so there were people that I could talk to about that, but nobody that I really could look to and go, you know, how did they hold the brush in their mouth? Um, so that's when I first became associated with the uh, mouth and foot painting artists because mm -hmm. they have been producing their cards now for over 70 years uh, and they reproduce calendars and different products as well so once I started researching a bit of uh, what they've done mm -hmm. uh, I could see that there was a way for me to come forward and, and actually have a, a independent life. Yeah and a, a future that you had mastery of. It's a remarkable one too Margaret we have so many wonderful friends from all over the world. Now. I can only imagine and you set such a wonderful example um, you know for all of us so let's let's show people how you paint and you're continuing to work on this what what is this painting? Well this is a painting actually uh, I'm hoping to finish in time for uh, uh, an exhibition in Rio de Janeiro next year. Our so that's Rio, right? Together. These are some of the hillside houses along the outside. So, so what's beautiful. beautiful about it is that they do these wonderful colors. And it's really a treat to sort of see how it uh, is all going to come together. And I never really know what my colors are going to be until I actually get into it. And then you blend. I do. You have such a steady touch. Was it always that way? Um, yeah, I think so. You know, I really did kind of start out with some pretty uh, discouraging things at first. <laughs> but a few things that didn't quite work out. Yeah. But I, as I look at your various pieces of art, and there's some abstract things, there's a painting uh, next to us of, I think you said, your wife's grandparents or family homestead back in mm. Arkansas. There's such precision in these pieces. Well, I've been inspired over the years by uh, uh, Northwest Coast Indian art. And a lot of their work is very formal and uh, hard edge. And I think also with my uh, uh, commercial art background, there's a lot of that also. We're looking at some pictures of, of your art right here. It's all kinds of things. I mean, you do uh, different genres so successfully. It, is there anything that you find difficult to do, or do you just find a way to adapt to the circumstance? Well, I pretty much, you can see, I stick with uh, watercolors. And uh, many of our artists work with oils and acrylics and different materials. Mm -hmm. But I find that the way I work, I don't really work at an easel straight out. Um, so working like I do this way, uh, sometimes can be difficult with turpentine fumes and things like that, as right, long as you're, you're close careful to and things, yeah. All right, that makes sense. Now, you've worked um, in front of and demonstrated what you do in front of some pretty impressive people, including Andy Warhol mm. and the first President Bush. Um, as you've done that, tell me a little bit about what you're communicating to them by demonstrating and, and showing them the way you've adapted. 
Well, I think it's a matter of, um, you know, how badly do you want to achieve something? You know, are you going to find a way <laughs> right. to work? Um, and I worked with the Department of um, Vocational Rehabilitation. They helped me get a position uh, at the Burke Museum, where I've been working for many years, answering phones and doing things. Um, and uh, the State Arts Commissions have provided grants for me to bring my art to schools and community groups and things like that. That's such an uh, important thing for kids. Oh, it's wonderful. Um, to kind of see that you can adapt to yeah. what life and has that's in store for you, through. even if you don't yeah. necessarily ever see it coming. You really don't. You know, I was 21, and I guess that was kind of a period of time when, you know, I was young enough that I could kind of learn to adapt to the situation a little bit, but old enough that I'd, I'd have a pretty active life prior to that and did a lot of adventure travels and things like that. So I didn't feel like I missed out on too much. Well, for a lot of people, if something happens like that at a, at a young age when they expected a different sort of life, that transition can be pretty tough. What do you think got you through that? Yeah, well, I think um, for me, uh, you know, it was my faith. Um, it was the the love of a good woman that uh, we've now been together over 30 years. And Yay, where she is she? Me she keeps me going. There She's go. over there. <laughs> so, um, so all those things are, are really important to me. And, and volunteering and sharing my work with that Children seems to make a big difference. And so there's all kinds of things that, you know, as you mentioned, are, are part of the Association of Mouth and Foot Painting Artists, um, bookmarks and cards such as you have here. And you even did the face cards for a, a deck of playing cards, which is fairly amazing. That was really These are fun beautiful. Project. I really enjoyed that. Thanks. That is, so what size were these when you painted them? They were probably about 18 by 24 or so. And, um, well, one of the challenges size we're, down so well. well, we're dealing with now, of course, is people aren't sending out greeting cards like they used to, and they're using a lot of... I still media. do. I still do. Thank I, you, Martha. Yeah. I'm so glad to hear you say that. <laughs> I like a good written card, uh, so that would true. make sense. That's true. Um, uh, could some of the art be incorporated into online cards? It's like Very much so. People go more digital? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, our uh, organization has a website where people are mm -hmm. able to order products, but mostly it's done through direct mail. We'll make sure that we put that website up so people oh, can goodness. support and see more of your art. Thank you very much for it coming in. That is going to be gorgeous when it's finished. Um, Brahms Paintings will show at the Museum of Special Art in Bothell September 5th through October 30th. For the dates and times when Brahm himself will be presenting at the museum, you can go to our website. And, of course, we will connect you to the greeting cards. Please buy them. Send one to your mother. She'll be so thrilled that you, she got a handwritten note. <laughs> when we come back, only 24 hours to write, direct, and perform a play. It is happening, and we'll find out how after this break.